Hey there everyone, this is Carrie with Any Day Blessings and on this channel I mostly share homeschool related videos with a few uh, things mixed in here or there related to frugal living and thankful living. I do also um, blog over at anydayblessings.com and have a Facebook group but this place is all about homeschooling here on this channel so if that interests you, um, welcome and I'd love to have you stick around by subscribing and liking this video. This, uh, the series that I'm doing today, this is the final uh, video in the series I'm doing. This is uh, God's Design for Life from Masterbooks, and I have lots of other Masterbooks videos. Those are well received on this channel, and so uh, if you're interested, you can go back and see the, um, the other two videos in this series, but this is video three in my God's Design for Life walkthrough because I knew I couldn't fit it all into one video of any reasonable length, so I just decided to spread it out and split it up. Today's video is, like I said, the final video. The first video was the schedule and how I plan to use it. I'm, de I'm deviating from the schedule in this book. Um, the second video was a deep, um, a, a deep, that's not the word, um, a thorough, <laughs> a thorough flip through of this book along with the enrichment materials I plan to use. Today's video is going to be mostly about this video, uh, this book and how the two compare for purposes of your placement. Uh, how, how do you know which book to place your child in? This one is written with a suggested age range of K to 2, and this one with a suggested age range of grades 3 through 8. So how do you know uh, if you've got a child right there on that 2 to 4, uh, or 2nd to 3rd, I should say, 2nd to 3rd grade, maybe even 2nd to 4th grade, uh, how do you know which one of these to pick? So I hope this video will help with that as well. I'm going to pull this book away just for the time being. We are going to do a lot of comparing between the two, but just so I can uh, show you inside this book a little bit more, I'm just going to uh, give myself a little bit more room. I am going to show you inside this book. I'm going to show you a uh, comparison of the schedules, the assignments, the assessments, the projects. I'm going to show you how you can use this um, uh, together with the other course or independently. And then I'm finally going to give you some um, suggestions about using this book um, with uh, students on that older um, age range or maybe even past the suggested age range of this course just give you some ideas for how you could use that to be um, an independent course if you are needing to just hand science over to your student and have them do it independently I've got some thoughts for you about that okay so let's start off by just looking in this book this is an all-in-one course book so this is um, there's no separate teacher guide no other uh, materials that you need to purchase to do this course all of the worksheets the text for the course, everything is right here. There is a teacher introduction section, and I want to point this out because I do think a lot of times when people run into trouble with master books, it's because they, they skip the front matter. There's so much in the front of their books that really explains the heart behind it, it explains the method, it explains um, how to use the course, there's just a lot here. And so I really suggest that you take the time to read this. This will let you know um, um, different information about where to where to find things in the course book it will let you know about the special uh, activities that, that that are available um, there are a whole bunch I'm just going to show those to you now I'll just show that now there are a whole bunch of optional activities back here and um, they're everything from experiments to make a mobile make a model of this so I mean there's just a ton here I'm sorry I'm kind of sitting sideways off the camera so I'll just have to Make sure I'm, is my camera crooked? I don't know, let's see here. I think that's okay. All right, so look for uh, this symbol on the different lessons and that will tell you that there is a, a special activity in the back which can really ramp up the hands-on component of this course. I know that's been a concern for some and I think some people just didn't know that, that uh, there's this little um, symbol on the lessons that have those op optional activities. So look for that, but definitely don't skip this. Uh, there is a special project, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, there is a supply list as well as a schedule. Now this schedule here is intended for those who, who plan to use this course um, separate from the main course book. So if you are not combining a kindergartner or um, first grader or something with an older student who's using the main book, then you can just use this course. If you know your oldest student is a kindergarten through second grade student uh, that's using this, um, you can just use this schedule for your science year. And it does schedule out the whole course. 
It is, um, so you see 180 days right there, okay? Um, it is 105 lessons. It's the same as the original book, except um, the original book has something that I pointed out. I'm going to bring it over here real quick. It has something called special features, these right here. These are not in the beginner book, okay? There's nothing like that in there. They just go from lesson to lesson to lesson. So there's another one right here. Now take note of this one. Oops. Take note of this one. So here's lesson four. And then there's a special feature before you get to lesson five. Just kind of remember that, okay? I'm going to show you something in just a second about that, okay? So this has the same number of lessons as the main book, but it doesn't have those extra quiz days and it doesn't have those extra, um, or not the quiz days, I'm sorry, those extra special uh, feature days. It doesn't have those, okay? So if you are looking to combine the two, okay, you wouldn't use this schedule. You would go to the Masterbooks website and you would print off this schedule. This here is called the alternate schedule and it breaks down when you use a lesson out of this beginner book with um, the older student's book. So this is actually, um, you only need this if you want to combine the two levels of the material. Uh, if you, like I said, if you're just using this with a kindergartner or something, you would use this one. But this allows you to keep on track with where your older students are. This is available for download on the Masterbooks website on this product page. So when you're buying your copy of Life for Beginners, you can uh, print off the schedule right from the page. Okay, now one thing, oh wait, one thing I noted here, remember how I said to look at day four, lesson four, do lesson four, and then in the big book, there was that special feature about cells. So you see they have the kindergarten through second graders skipping this day. And then they come back together and do the, um, their version of a quiz, which I will show you, and then back um, all together to do lesson five. So this little skip, the reason they have like a skip in the middle of the week is because they don't bring the kindergartner through second graders in on those special features. Now, if you watched my first video, you know we're not doing those special features as they appear in the course. We're saving those for the end of year if we have time. So I'm not actually going to use this schedule as written. Basically, because I'm already cutting out those special features, we're just going to line up perfectly. So if you are looking for an easy way to line up this course, this book, with this one, <laughs> just don't do the special features. <laughs> and then that way, um, your lessons will line up perfectly. All right. Um, all right, so we talked about the schedules. Let's look at this assignment. So we have a special project here. This actually will show up at the end of the course, and I will, I will show you where that shows up. But this just gives you just some basic instructions, but there are more instructions at the end of the course, and I will show that to you. But they do have a special project, just like the Big Kids book does. All right, um, let's go ahead to show you the assignments, because this is, I'm going to make some comments here about um, the... Uh, the level and some considerations for placement here. So I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but all of the the worksheets are in this book. You don't need a separate book, so there's nothing to print off. Everything is in here. So as I'm showing you the content, this is the this is the actual content of the lesson right here, and that's it. <laughs> that's the whole lesson for that one. Here's more content for lesson two. That's it. Okay. The content that you read for lesson three, a little longer, and that's it. So you can see the actual content of the lesson is much shorter, but we're dealing with much younger students, so I do think it's age appropriate. Let me get back here to this. So this is the actual lesson that you would read to your child, and these are the activity pages that they would do. Okay? Um, the Older kids are doing a scavenger hunt in the first lesson as well. So they have similar activities. The one thing I notice that's different is the amount of coloring or um, kind of black line images that are meant for more, you know, uh, uh, 
basic activities like circling things, that kind of stuff. When you're looking at placement, you know, you might say, oh, my first grader or second grader, they're not going to like doing that. I'm just going to tell you right now, this, this, this tracing thing would not have gone over with my third grader this year. I considered using this course for him. He would not have liked this. He would not have liked coloring. He would not have liked those things. However, I also know that at kindergarten and maybe even first grade, this font right here, can you see this? It's very light. That is way super tiny for my little kindergartner to hold a pencil and trace that. That font is very tiny. This is the, this is the size that they're tracing in kindergarten in this house. So they're not, they're not tracing anything this small, okay? So keep in mind, if you're looking at placing a wee kindergartner, number one, you're going to have to read the lesson to them, which I think most people know and, and most people do. They may not be to the tracing point right at the first lesson in kindergarten, and that may frustrate them. Keep that in mind. And they definitely will not be able to, well, I shouldn't say definitely, because we might have some really uh, advanced motor skill kindergartners out there, but this is super tiny, I think, for, for a kindergartner to trace. So just keep that in mind. On the other hand, a second grader, you know your kids best, may not like circling everything in the picture that is alive. They may, they may think that's kind of um, a babyish activity. Um, but I think just about everyone would like the scavenger hunt. So I hope what you're seeing there is, is variety, flexibility. If this is too small for your kindergartner, okay, just have them trace this and read the verse to them. If this and this is too babyish for your second grader, then just have them trace this and do the scavenger hunt. You have tons of options here. It may not look like much, but they have done a tremendous job at making this an, a true age range curriculum. There are, there are various things that different age ranges can do and you can skip some and, and do others depending on the age of child. There are some open narration questions at the end of every lesson um, in, in lieu of a, a paper question and answer, short answer sheet. They're all done orally. So that kind of gives you some um, idea of the assignments in this book. If you look at the assignment for the same lesson in this book, I showed you this in more detail in the other assignment or in the other video. You still have the narration questions here and you have the scavenger hunt. Oops, I'm off the camera. You have the scavenger hunt here. Okay, so the activities do line up, they're very similar. These are just brought down to the level of the younger kids. All right, let's take a look at how a quiz is handled here. It's not even called a quiz, it's called a unit vocabulary review. But if you have something that you want um, for some reason to, to track progress, or and I, I really wouldn't even say this tracks progress because it's so hard to measure uh, with these wee ones, but um, if you just need like some sort of paper to put in a portfolio, let's, let's, let's phrase it that way. This might be something to kind of show what you covered in a particular unit because it will go over all the vocabulary that you discussed. Now here's a little pro tip. All of those terms are the big ones that they trace. So as long as you make a point, whether you have them trace it or not, as long as you make a point of kind of making sure they, they know what those words mean, uh, those are considered your vocabulary. Now they're not asked to define them in any way. They're, they're doing activities like this. In fact, I think most of the unit activities or the unit vocab are, um, let me just find another one. Oh no, see, yeah. <coughs> we got some matching. Um, ooh, we have, oh, that's not a, that's not a unit vocab. We have a crossword puzzle. So they're, they're puzzle things. It's not like, um, oh, but this one here, this one here, yes, they have to know the definition here. So see, it kind of ramps up. That's neat. I didn't actually notice that that they had to know the definition and fill in the correct word. So those are the quote unquote quizzes. They're unit vocabulary assessments and they're not the same every time, but they're always some sort of puzzle-ish thing, okay? Got some drawing here. Those are the assessments in this book. As you saw in my last video and in this series, the, um, the older student book has legit quizzes. So that would be a difference depending on what you need 
um, and what you would like, those, those are your options in this course uh, for quizzes. Okay, let's take a look at the projects. Okay, let's look at um, here. Okay. When you get to, oh wait, hold on, is this the lesson I wanted? Hold on one second, let me see. No, this isn't the lesson I wanted. Okay, when you get to the end of a unit, this is the end of plants. This is plants, human body, and animals. So this is the end of the first third of the course, the end of that first book. This is their final project for plants. You have learned about the amazing world of plants God has created for us. Aren't you glad he made all the plants? And they get to make a plant collage. Well, if you remember from the older kids book, I'll open that up too so you can see the difference in assignments. This is their final project for plants. It's a plant collage, but there's also an assignment to write a poem expressing your thanks to, uh, your expressing your wonder, I'm sorry, at God's design for the world of plants. So just taking it up a notch, same basic assignment, um, but at, at a, a different level for the um, higher level of student. So this is, um, one option you could do the plant collage or if this is still even too you know too much draw your favorite plant you know some nature study head out into nature and draw your favorite plant so uh, that's the that's the difference in the final projects and you'll notice the same in human body and the animal as well the animal uh, section as well it's the same basic project just brought down to scale for the littler ones all right let's talk about using this together okay so, I've done some sample lessons of this, like with my kiddos, you know, together, um, like practice runs, if you will. And this is how I would use these two courses together. Number one, I am not using the special features in this, so our courses, or our lessons are going to line up perfectly um, throughout the course. And you can check video one in this series to see how that's going to work. But how do we actually teach both age groups at the same time out of both books. Well, I position myself in the middle of my students. So I have my daughter on this side, my son on this side, and we have our books open. And this is how um, I, I envision this going. This is how our test runs <laughs> are going anyway. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? You know what, I'll just, I'll just show you one book at a time. So as we're talking about lesson one, I told you in my, uh, last video that I plan to use this course for my, my son who will be in fourth grade. I plan to use this as his first kind of introduction into note taking and um, we're going to do that by teaching, I'm going to do that by teaching him how to highlight and look for text clues of important information like what clues do we find in, a te in the text that tell us this might be something to remember. So we're going to work on that this year. So I'll have my son open up his book, my daughter has her book open and I'll kind of stand in between them and I'll, um, I'll look over at my son and have him um, take a look at the words to know. In this case, there's just one, but we'll just kind of take note of that, that that's what we're looking out for, okay? Then, um, how can we tell if something is alive? I'll start reading this with my son, and this is what I did in our practice. I started reading this with my son, and then I said, okay, Abby, um, let's take a look at what your book says about that. And so then I came over here and read this little bit to her and I said, okay, well, let's, let's see what, what it means to be a living thing. It looks like we have a list here. Let's look at these. So we started reading through these things and I would read something in here and then I would go over and find the complementary fact here. So it said, um, Living things eat and absorb nutrients. Well, what does it say about your your earthworms, Abby? What does it say? It says a gummy worm cannot eat, but an earthworm eats dead plants in the soil. So does that give you a clue as to which one is alive? All right, let's look for our next clue. And then I will come back to Big Brother's book and say, okay, it says here, what does it say? You know, Drew, and he could read this to me. And, oh, there's our word. You know, we found our word. And so... Um, we would read that living things perform uh, respiration, and um, let's see, Libby, does Andrew, or Andrew, Abby, does it say anything about that in your book? No, it doesn't say that in your book, but does a gummy worm breathe? 
No, it doesn't. What's the next thing your book says? Your book says that an earthworm wriggles and the gummy worm just lies there. How about your book, Andrew? Does it say anything about moving? You know, so you see what I'm going with this, guys? Like, I'm just, the, the text of this book is modeled after the text of this book. It's just brought down to the level of a kindergartner uh, through second grader. So you can just read the section to to one child and then go to the, the other the other child's book and, and see if they can add any more information to that from their book. I really do think, um, at least in our, in, our, in our sample lesson, it went well. And um, I, I wanted to kind of see if that worked before I shared it with y'all. And so it, it seemed like it did, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes on the, the grand scale of a whole school year, but that's how we intend to use it. And then we can ask, um, I can ask my daughter these questions and I can ask my son his narration questions and then we can go on our scavenger hunt together. Abby has her little sheet. I can rip this out. This is perforated so I can rip this out and I can put this on a clipboard for her. Give my son his sheet and they each have their own sheet. And then when they come back inside uh, from the scavenger hunt, um, I can make this an optional activity for my daughter to do while my son uh, goes over those words to know. So. Um, that, that's how we intend to use them together at the lesson level, but on the schedule level, really, they're going to line up perfectly because we have opted not to use the special features. I want to uh, pull this book away and just have a, a few final comments about uh, using this book as an independent course. Now, if you're using this with a kindergartner through second grader, uh, oh, not this one, so sorry, pulled away the wrong book this one. <laughs> if you are using this with a kindergartner through second grader, um, you are most likely going to have to read this to them and be involved and that's that's fine. But if you, say you have a third grade student or even a fourth grade student who's never had science before, a fourth grader who maybe doesn't really like science so well, they're more of a literature or art type student and they, they just, you know, do science just to get her done. Um, and they haven't had anything formal. Maybe you've just done nature study or you've just done kind of uh, topical things here and there, but uh, you would like to get a, uh, an intro to science course for that third or fourth grader and you would like them to do it independently. I think this book, uh, which is the beginner book, I, I think this book could be given to a third or fourth grade student um, who's reading at that grade level and they could easily read this on their own and they could also complete the activities on their own and then come back to mom to do the questions together. Um, I think that um, if I was doing that, then I would make all of these um, activities at the back, these optional activities, sorry, I know my book's off, going off camera here. I would make all of these optional activities assigned and these we would do together. So on the lessons that have um, one of these optional activities, so see lesson four, lesson six, 13, 14, 17, 19. It's not every lesson every day. I think it's, you know, maybe, um, okay, that was all for plants. These are all the optional activities for plants. So see out of that first 35 lessons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight optional activities. That's not, that, that's, that's not too much for mom to keep up with. Well, I shouldn't say that. If it's too much for you, don't feel bad. <laughs> but I, I, it's not overwhelming. It's not every lesson. Um, and then when you get to the human body book, there's uh, some optional activities here. A few more for the human body. And then here are the optional activities for the animal section. Oops, sorry, I'm going off camera. Here are the optional activities. I would make these assigned. And I would do them all. In order to do that, in order to just hand your student this book, make sure you take out these answer keys just so they're not tempted to take a peek back there. But I would definitely hand this over to a third or fourth grade student who is reading at that grade level and just assign them the pages and they could actually uh, follow. If, if you're doing this just with a third or fourth grade and they don't have younger siblings tagging along, they could just independently follow this schedule right along and just do, do their thing. If they are going with a younger student, um, then you're probably going to be doing science all together anyway. But um, if, they're, if they're just doing this on their own, then they can just use the schedule right in the front of the book. But I, I think this is um, totally doable for an uh, independent course for 
those older students, read the lesson, do the activities, come do narration with mom. And that's how I would do it if my son wasn't such a science loving kid and um, hasn't already had three formal science courses by third grade, <laughs> then I would have uh, probably opted to do that with him just to give him a little independence because uh, life science is actually his least favorite of the sciences. He does like animals and he likes something about the human body. He despises plants. So I'm so glad it's at the beginning because we'll just get it out of the way. He's, he'll be fresh in the school year and he won't be bored with school yet. So it'll give us the opportunity to just like get her done. But um, I would have totally done that with him this year. I would have given this to him to be independent and said, just do the assignments, at, you know, follow the schedule at the beginning and do it. And I would have given it to him to do independently if he hadn't already done formal science before because th this would have not been um, science-y enough, if that's a word, uh, for him uh, at, the, at that point because he'd already kind of really dove into science. He's, he knows the scientific method. He's... He's all about experiments and jotting down his hypotheses and his and his um, observations. So this is for beginners, for beginners. So I wouldn't give this to a kid who's your big science buff um, at that older end of the science or at the older end of the age and expect them to get enough science out of it. This is perfect for developing the love of science. This is perfect for... Um, uh, students who haven't had formal science yet and kind of need to learn what the scientific method is, what uh, scientists do, what, um, what we can learn from God's word about science. So this is like a foundational. Uh, we've, already, we've already had that foundation um, in, with, well, for my son, but I'm delighted to be able to form that foundation with this course with my daughter. So that's why we're starting out with this for her because she has not had those formal science courses and she's going to be a kindergartner. So that is my uh, uh, last video. That's a wrap. Um, in the God's Design for Life series, I hope this was helpful for you all. I hope I answered all your questions. I hope I helped you figure out where to place your child, some different things to consider. You know, consider those motor skills. Your child's not quite tracing and writing. Um, just consider those things. Consider um, the amount of reading in this course before you hand it over to your students. Consider, you know, all of the things I've shared over these three videos. And I really think that once you uh, take that information and place your child in the right level, I think you are set for a delightful year of science. They've done a tremendous job at putting this together, giving us tons of flexibility as homeschoolers for using different activities for different age, um, not even age level, but just a different ability level um, considerations. And um, I think it will work beautifully with um, all the different age ranges and abilities that you have in your home. If this didn't, if this series didn't answer all of your questions, please, by all means, leave me a comment down below and I'd be happy to answer it for you. And please uh, make sure you are subscribed for my next Masterbooks video, which I'm excited to say will be about spelling. I hear that question a lot too. I'm going to do a, um, a sample week's worth of lesson ideas for how you can incorporate spelling uh, daily in the Language Lessons for a Living Education course and um, give you a free printable over on my blog to go along with that so you have a schedule that you can use uh, as you're doing those lessons. So that's what's up next and um, I hope that you will subscribe so you don't miss it and I'll catch you in that video. Bye-bye.